Yo, this sad excuse of a video will be a little different. Basically, I'm gonna be recapping the entirety of the Genshin Impact 4.0 Valtain Archon quest unreliably. So, if you're looking for a full summary, then don't watch this video. Anyways, let us begin. So the quest started at us being at Carava Rehat for no reason at all. I guess we forgot we got a brother to find, and while there, Paimon starts saying how the travelers are bad omen to basically every nation we went to, and I mean, he's not <laughs> wrong. So that is why we're going to Fountain. Makes sense. I too will speed up the car when I notice I'm about to hit a family of four. I hate people. And then the most community satisfied character came along, Dark Water. I mean, have you seen how people were when she first released? She was trending on Twitter, and apart from that, she managed to single-handedly unite the English and the Chinese community together with this one imp. Crap, wrong imp. Uh, this one. Uh, I mean, have you ever seen anyone besides Dark Water? Do what do you mean? That's not her name. Anyways, after telling her we're going to Fountain, she started being sad. Boom! Imagine being sad like an actual human being could have been. Why is there a phone message at my PC? Wait. <gasps> Why are people so mean? By the way, can we talk about Traveler's Risk? Because god damn all this girl gotta do is not talk and she can make everyone in Tabat be the cause of Fountain being flooded. Oh, by the way, this guy is spying on us, but uh, who cares? To Fountain! At Fountain, let's go and just like any reasonable person would do while in a new region, we of course ask the citizens how we find a flipping god. Ah, Greece, what a wonderful place. Hello, random citizen. Might I ask how I take a selfie with Zeus? But while attempting to talk to them, we overheard them talking about an interesting play. Turns out it wasn't a play, but a flipping trowel not so long ago. And it also turns out that the Fountain Court is also known as the Opera Epic Class. Ah, yes, Fountain people seeming pretty fucked up so far. So we proceed to ask our very regular question, and it seems if we want to meet the god of Hydro, we gotta make an appointment with her. Hold on guys, I'ma go make an appointment with God itself, gonna ask why I'm dumb and unfunny. And yeah, we basically learned some lore about how the Chief Justice is Nubalet and how, um... Uh, you, you know what? You do it. The Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, <laughs> a machine created by the Archon. Not gonna, Between the not machine even and attempt. the Chief Yeah, it makes the verdict. And after we finished talking to them, we saw- OH MY GOD IT'S A- Anyways, we asked if she was okay, since according to Paimon, looking at the sea means you're going to jump. And yeah, she started saying, yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of problems, but there's nothing I can do but to just keep my troubles to myself. So it all began when I was a feet. So she began to talk about her problems, about how the world is gradually being swallowed by water and will eventually swallow our memories as well. But to be honest, I think she's being goddamn dramatic because all you need to do is just stop throwing trash. Oh my god, it's Linny! So now that Linny's here, he introduced her sister and himself to us and Paimo was like, yo, your sister's weird, the fuck she on about? In which she responded by saying, screw that first, let us introduce ourselves. But we just did- Shut up. Okay. So he gave me a handshake and molested Paimon. Well, he is famous after all, and famous people couldn't keep their pants to themselves. Welcome, one and all, to Linny's and Linny's Magic Show. Lynette's not here because my entire family disowned me. Yeah! Thank you, thank you so much to that one singular person. Now, for my first trick, I will be touching children. Yeah, wait, what? I assure you all, touching children is essential for me to do this trick. This is a magic show, right? So after witnessing that, we just ignore that subject entirely and ask how we find the Hydro Archon. So he offered to take us to the opera house to meet her because as the responsible person she is, that's where she spends all her time binge watching real life. Oh, and uh, because they're gonna be performing that as well. But then, the water is really loud. Uh, you said you were going to see Lady Farina? Well, it seems Lady Farina has come to see you. Let's go! Yo! Yo! Hey, you're not like, what the fuck is that jig of it? Um. Yo! It's her! It's the spoiled brat! The music! Yo! My dear people, rich and poor, those My with God, her design. and those with nothing at all. 
raise your glasses in celebration. If you don't have one, then just raise your hand, Liu. Well, that was easy. So she started talking nonsense, and Paimon was like, Yo, how'd you know we'd be here? And in response, she started talking shit. Oh, fuck you! And after staring at her with our beautiful dead eye, she was like, Um, uh, you, you know what? Let's fight. Oh, yeah, let's go! <laughs> you ignorant fool, I actually meant to fight in court! Alright, then the court seems like a sufficient arena. Precise. Wait, what? That's not what I meant. Don't care, show me some hands! So, yeah, basically, we're being sued because. According to Fontaine Law, no one is permitted to release any flying objects within Fontaine city limits during the first three days of each month. You are clearly guilty of violating this law, no? <sighs> I hate you, Paimon. But worry not, because Linny is here to save the day, cause turns out he wasn't possessing the child, he was attaching a leash to it. Even better! Now where's my spray bar? And yeah, Paimon's now considered as a balloon, and we are no longer violating the law, and because of that, she decided to <laughs> laugh her ass off and leave. Toodaloo! What the f- So after... Whatever that was, we thanked Linny, and Paimon proceeded to say, Paimon had no idea you were a magician, Linny! I know, right? I thought he was a doctor. And after witnessing Paimon's stupidity, Lene decides to invite us to their show despite just meeting us five minutes ago. But before we go, we gotta do some side quests because this isn't Genshin Impact if the quest isn't 10 hours long. He basically wants us to give magical pockets to people because of a prophecy. Basically, there was a prophecy about how everyone born in Fountain have committed a sin. What sin exactly? Being born in Fountain, of course. Like the fucking audacity you must have to be born. And yeah, everyone in Fountain would dissolve into water, leaving the Hydro Archon crying like a little bit. And after giving people magical pockets and Yankee flowers for videos, we saw Thief doing Thief stuff. So, Linny came up with a plan to stop her, and that is just me standing in one spot and Lynette being AFK while he does all the work. My type of guy. Anyways, he failed to catch the Thief, but got some of the items back, and after returning it, we went to the Aqua Bus and ran into- OH MY GOD IT'S CHARLOTTE! Okay, this isn't even a good joke and it's getting old. Anyway, Anyways, we talked to Charlotte and learned that there's this 20 years ongoing case about how multiple young women similar in age would disappear. Um, and what exactly are they doing to these girls? Oh, never mind, it's the serial disappearance of young women, so it's most likely that these girls are dead. Thank God. Um, I, I mean, I mean, that's terrible. That's absolutely horrible. And even though she's talking about such a serious matter, the look and demeanor she has is, um, Concerning, but who cares because we made it to Fountain City. Let's go. We at Fountain. I already said that and first things first We gotta go to Linny's house to drop off material and while we're at there We met Fermanet and then it started Linny said that it rains whenever there's a trial going on and Fermanet proceeds to tell us a legend that it rains whenever the Hydro Dragon cries and it usually stops if you say Hydro Dragon Hydro Dragon Don't cry yeah, I don't think it worked. And after we stood in the rain, we stood in the goddamn rain. Go in the house. Moving on, it's night now. Linny has something to do, and because Fermanet is a socially anxious freak like me, we gotta go deliver the materials we got. And while doing that, we learn that there's this energy that powers the machine that's produced by the trowels, and another one that's unstable. Yeah, I'm not pronouncing these words. And then a debt collector showed up to collect debt, and then Chout showed up to collect the yeah, debt. Hello, traveler! I'm gonna go beat these guys up now because they smell. Understandable. What the fuck? Now's my chance! Well, crap. Here you go. Take my vision. Okay. So Paimon asks what Child is doing in Fountain, acting all buddy-buddy, ignoring the fact that he almost flooded an entire city. But the reason why he's here is because there's this power stirring inside of him, then proceeds to tell us his whole backstory. Basically, he fell into an unknown abyss and met his master Skirt that taught him everything. He asked why she's helping him and she said because you have awakened it and that it might be related to a dream he had about a will. And while talking to him, we learned that there's this system in Fountain where if you're guilty, you can fight a champion, and if you win, then you're not guilty anymore. Anyways, he's gonna go fight said champion visionless now, and after seeing Chow basically running into his own grave, we went to Linny show. We're here- What the shame. fuck? Ma'am, nobody gives a crap about you mourning? Do that somewhere else, please. Ah! <gasps> Lynette! 
shivering in my boots right as we speak. Anyways, Lumine asked about that voice she heard in the fountain, and Lynette said it's because all flowing water and fountain converges here in the fountain, even the tears of people, and I'm very sensitive to water. Look at Lynette trying to justify me not taking a shower. Anyways, we went to meet up with Linny and he showed us our seats and- Oh my god, mm -hmm. Yeah, Nuvalet's here. Oh, and the Hydro Archon is also here as well. <laughs> Fuck you. And yeah, the show began. Nuvalet is annoyed by Paimon screaming. Ah, oh, it's done! Which makes him instantly my best friend and the cutscene ensue. Oh shit, we're dead. A magician's greatest skill is making things disappear okay. or appear. The possibilities are endless. Huh. <sighs> Look, it's nothing. A rabbit's gonna show up. Hmm. Never mind, <laughs> it's just gonna defy gravity. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> really cool. But this isn't what you came for. These little tricks, you've seen them all before. In your trailer, yes. So it's time for something truly extraordinary, huh? don't you think? This one's a little tricky. Okay. That's a bird! Oh god! She's Using this throw. water tank, I shall make my sister vanish completely, right before your very eyes. Oh. Oh, this music is playing. It's actually quite simple. She'll just turn into air bubbles and float right out of the top. Uh, um, what do you mean by that? Oh no, I told them to check all the props carefully. Don't worry, she's just acting, yeah. With the lid on, even air can't escape. No mind, An amateur sucks. magician would be getting very nervous right around now. <laughs> Luckily, it's me on stage, so yeah. let me show you what a true virtuoso can do. Kill your sister. Dead now. So in another room, she's gonna be naked. She's shot. Are you still there? Don't go too far. We don't want to use up all our magic. Hi, I'm back. Uh huh. What? Oh damn. Well, that was a show, but come on, it would be funny if Lynette did die though. But now he's about to call a volunteer to do a switcheroo tricks with the boxes with this random number selecty thingy that's totally not Rick and totally will not pick me. Aww. And yeah, they got in their boxes and then he told us to count down to 60 seconds and then there's this... Oh, never mind, he's dead. And another cutscene plate. Oh. Almost there now. Eight. Whew. Swapping two people is harder work than you might think. Even a master magician like me can't guarantee I'll get it right the first time. Oh, hey, wait. Okay. Is this the back one? I can't tell. They both look the same inside. Huh? No, that's not it. I'll try again. Seven! Hey, slow down! Honestly! Five! Hey, travel speaking! Uh, whoops! That doesn't count! It's gonna be the normal girl. Everyone's gonna fuck. <laughs> My God. Ta da! <laughs> She's gonna die.
Needless to say, I was shocked. And yeah, Nouvellet cancelled the show, which is such a party pooper move. I mean, come on, there's only one dead guy. I pay for my ticket. Okay, now nah, I got it for free. So yeah, he locked down the entire place and investigated the incident. And the person that was supposed to be in the box was apparently nowhere to be found. However, Linny's assistant, Cowell, was found in the box instead. Dead. And it looked like the pyrotechnics burnt the rope that was holding the water tank, leading to it to fall. But of course, they're not buying that. Anyways, Linny's now the prime suspect of the serial disappearance of young woman's case. Well, according to Perina, that is. Haha! <laughs> to think you could fool the Hydro Archons with such basic tricks. Hey, Farina, shut the fuck up. Are you pressing charges or what? 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 Pr pressing what? Uh, huh? I'm gonna take that as a yes. Hey, if I'm pressing charges, then the traveler should be the attorney since that draw we had earlier was so unsatisfying. First of all, I clearly won. Second of all, I have zero attorney experience. Is this even allowed? Well, she is our Archon after all. I hereby declare that the traveler is now Lenny's attorney. What the fuck? I'm sorry, but you are so fucked. Anyway, so Lenny's gonna go speak to the guards to get permission to show us his magic trick that gone wrong while we go investigate. And while doing so, we learned that the seat selector thingy was rigged. The location of the rope that snapped was made out of flammable material. The bang during the show might be important. Paimon's a fucking dumbass. And the girl had no relation with the magic troop. And while searching for more clues, we encountered the flipping mafia. Paimon, I told you to stop dealing with the mafia, damn it! Oh, never mind. It's just the Spindal di Rosula. Whatever that is. And this girl now. Navia just recently became their boss, and by recently I meant 3 years ago when she became fatherless. And by the way, are we gonna talk about how these dudes are wearing sunglasses in a dimly lit room? I mean, is this normal? Anyway, she wants to help us in this case since she's interested in the serial disappearance case and find it hard to believe that Linny's the culprit. But you know what I find hard when seeing her? Of course it's her goddamn deep damn it slap! But yeah, she's with us now. Bruh. So we proceeded to ask the guard if anyone has left the opera Epicles during the incident and she said no and of course I trust her with every cell in my body because just look at her. And then we went back to Linny so that he could show us how the trick works. Oh, she's with us now. Ah. And yeah, it turns out inside the box was another box that were lowered down to the rear thus going to the other side. Furthermore, the voice we heard while Linny was inside the box was a phonograph operated by Lynette who was behind the stage box and the one who came out of the box at the end was Lynette as well. Now we just need evidence. Guys, how well does trust me bro work as evidence? And now, uh, investigation time. Yay. We speculated that someone might be playing Among Us but sadly the spent only support single player which frankly kinda defeats the whole purpose of the game. Game. And then we found this knocked over vase filled with water next to the girl that disappeared's clothes. She must have had a really good time before disappearing. And then we found this hook. Nothing special about it, it's just a hook. And yeah, we went outside, ate some macarons that Navia just so happens to have the ingredients for, and we proceeded to speculate the existence of a third person. And then Paimon proceeds to accidentally eat an extra two macarons. Keyword accident. Fuck you, Paimon. Alright then, after all that investigating, we found absolutely nothing to support our case. But hey, the trial started, but worry not, cause I just so happen to have the perfect defense statement. Your honor, my client clearly said whoops. No, he did not. Yeah, huh? Uh, what? Anyways, Linny started by explaining how the trick works in order to prove that they were absent during the incident. And after doing so, Purina object, asking Linny if he heard a loud thud. And which Linny responded by saying he had never heard of such a sound. Hey, screw you, go back up! And after talking shit, she decided to say, Tell me, aren't you and Lynette actually from the House of the Hearth? <gasps> What's that? Oh, oh he's Vatui! Ah, crap, my finger slipped! Hey, yo, who this? Well, turns out this girl has put an all-nighter on what seems like a no-brainer Yo, chill! What was that sound? Anyways, we took a break from the trial since Linny hid information from his lawyer who has 15 minutes of experience and so he explained how they want to save people unlike <laughs> the others and they have been investigating how the oratory works. 
and found out that the machine's core is beneath the aura trees. So, with the intention to get close to it, he performed the box trick. So, what happened was Lin he used the vent we saw earlier because that's where the core is. But right when he made it to the room, he heard a voice that recognized him. So, in response, he was like, Ah, hell nah, and built. And when he got out, he saw the broken face and clothes that we saw as well and went to finish the trick. And the reason why he wants to investigate the aura tree was because they need to know about all the nation's secret to deal with the prophecy. And we're back at court. So Farina started stating what she thinks happened and that is basically- Yo, nah, what is this? I gotta do more than spend money? Nah, shit game. But yeah, she first said that he entered the tunnel and when the box cart thingy passed, he opened the box and attacked her, making that thud. He assumed no one from the audience could hear it, but he was wrong. And then Kawa arrived with the intention to investigate. And then damn, that is one punch. That was personal. And then he stuffed the knocked out cow in the box and did this. And now now it's time to prove why Farina is wrong. And jokes on you, Lady Farina. Because I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Random bullshit, go! It worked. Yeah, we basically explained what Linny was doing, and after hearing that, Farina was like, That's a pretty cool argument. Why don't you back it up with a source? My source is, is that I made it the flip button. Nah, just kidding. The source is actually your inability to shut the fuck up. Gasp. That's right, wasn't it you yourself that proved that Linny didn't hear the bang? That means it proves that he was in the vents all along. Chilling! Me, I'm sad! And that's not all. Oh. Oh wait, that is all. Then Farina proceeded to say shut up, who was the killer then? And after spending 10 hours on the thinking minigame because I'm dumb, we eventually said it was the victim himself! Huh? You see, it was actually his turn to clean up that day, so he just died. Lynette, it was nice knowing you. And then Farina was like, Oh, is that so? How interesting! Let's hear your reasoning then. Well, see you in another 10 hours. Water! Huh? Sorry, I just needed water. I've been talking for 25 minutes straight. Wait a minute. I can bullshit with this. Investigate cow's bag! Why? Because, um, magic trick and, uh, dissolving people and stuff like that. Crap! Now what? Yeah, uh, after investigating, we found this test tube with water from the Primordial Sea that dissolves people from Fountain, and one of them is labeled the Opera Epiclet and is empty, and he belongs to an organization that sells drug and had an accomplice. Huh. Everyone freak out, we're fucked! The prophecy is real! Anyways, now we have thought of something and built while we continue thinking about how Cal could have killed- <laughs> why? Turns out initially, Cal tampered with the water tank and the number selector thingy, and then when housing got in the box and the box lowered, there's this hook that popped the balloon on top, causing the water to come out, dissolving her. And after doing so, he would then break the base and use the water tank to hide the water, and then dumb idiot stupid stupid boy just got in the box himself and died. I don't know, this is all seeming pretty far-fetched. I think my theory of him dying because he was lazy to clean up seems more believable. But now we need to find out how Kawa entered the box and died. Oh, we found our evidence. Looks like Lenin got the primordial seawater too. WHO THE HELL TOLD YOU TO LOOK IN HIS BACK?! Well, he's in the red again, and Farina started to state what she thinks happened, and that is Linny entered the tunnel, dissolved the girl with the water while she was in the box, killed Kawa, apparently his partner in crime, because he wanted credit. He wanted flipping credit. And yeah, we're pretty much fucked. Excuse me, everyone, but I must interject! Navia, you disappointment! You're supposed to scream OBJECTION! objection. But she basically said she's gonna show us a magic trick and that will make the missing girl show up. What is this girl saying? She's a witch! Yeah, she basically was hiding in the box at the tunnel and got out to testify because Navia said that might lessen her sentence because she was the one who killed Cow. And turns out she was the thief that Linny caught before and she has also stolen the ticket and she was also for Monster. <laughs> now what happened was she got in the box, water port, didn't affect her because the water's racist and then Cow showed up to beat her up but then she beat him up and stuffed him in the box. Wow. Then she changed her clothes and hid, so yeah, I think we're done here. Then he went down the tunnel and instantly went to the vent, and then the girl came out of the box because she panicked, thinking Linny was trying to catch her, cause she's a thief. Then Cow came to beat her up, but she defended herself and win. And then, it's funny because he was planning to use that to hide his traces. Oh, by the way, she was the one who ate the two macarons.
Look for us! But yeah, Furina tried to bill. That's funny. And Nouvellet summarized what happened. And then he proceeded to give a verdict. And Linny is not guilty. Now it's time for the Aura Tree to give a verdict. Well, what a happy ending. Anyways, God care to explain. Oh yeah, I was just following orders for my boss that discovered that people can get high from this primordial water thing and dissolve and he is actually- <laughs> Who the fuck is that? That was an eventful day. Hey, we're gonna tell you our backstory now. That really isn't necessary. So it all started when we were fetus. But yeah, Linny and Lynette has quite the backstory because when they were children, they got adopted by a rich family. But then the rich family sold a child Lynette to a pervert. Oh my- Oh my god, Fountain is dark, and Lynette attempted to rescue her, but Arachino was already there, and hey, they are now Arachino's children. Well, that was an eventful day. Hey, let's go eat. No. Okay, second Archon Quest time. So we took Navia up on that offer and went to eat with her. While we're there, she asked what our future plans are, and we said to talk to Farina. But if it were me, I would get some clients since I am now a professional lawyer. Anyways, Navia suggested some ways that will help us talk to Farina, and one of them is to go under her bed, wait till she sleeps, and wake her up, and do not let her sleep until you get what you want. This is actually the dialogue for the game. But we ended up deciding to just cut the line while she's on break. Oh, and Paimon stole Navia's fog car and still has the audacity to say this shit sucks. And yeah, we parted ways and went to the fountain of Lucene to hopefully meet for e Lucene? Shut the ah, crap! Damn it, Blue! Hello, um, I was once human and my beloved Vasher is my beloved. Could not tell. Anyways, all I could remember is seeing blue water stuff and, uh, tell Vasher not to look for me. Alright then. Like, just a reminder, do not let Vasher look for me. Okay. Like, I really need you to know- Alright, you know what? I'm leaving. What the- yeah, I'm gonna let this cutscene play. What the hell is happening? I was gone for five minutes! What the fuck? Yo! Yo, what the actual hell? Ah! What is- I was gone for five minutes! What? Uh... Uh... uh what is happening? I am confused. Come on, Look out. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gone. Ha it's a whole a army of Gardamax. Why? Hey, Clorand. You could not possibly want to kill me, right? Thank you. Okay. Guess that answers my question. Yo. <laughs> Yo, she's badass. Oh. Quick, now's our chance. Oh my god. <laughs> she's just walking there. Oh she Whoa! The steam! That is pretty dope. <sighs> well, after whatever that was, Nabi was like, What the heck are you doing here? Oh, I was stalking you. Huh. And then they got into a little quarrel, and she said her father wanted her safe, so that's why she's stalking her, but she doesn't care, and asked why on earth is there a whole entire army after? And she said, I don't know, these ain't mine. And then she left. Anyways, we proceeded to ask Nabia why she's here, sadly she isn't stalking us, and said because you stole my drink, pay up! What she actually said was, Fonta isn't meant to taste like shit, it must be the primordial seawater that dissolves people from Fontaine! Concerned how she's so sure about this. Then Lumine told Navia about Vashir and how his beloved dissolved too, and then Navia said there was no witness with that name in any of the serial disappearance case. Then we proceed to join Navia and her mafia dudes on this investigation because I mentioned she is obsessed with this case. 
And yeah, I have now became a level 100 Mafia. So now we're going to the Spina di Rosula's base and I am personally very hyped because judging by their attire, their base must be equal looking if not better than the opera epic- Nah, this place looks like shit! So we told Nabia how broke she is and she explained how money's tight but it wasn't when her father was in charge. What exactly happened to- Is that- Oh. So Navia's father, Carlos, was investigating the serial disappearance case, but was accused of murdering someone three years ago. But instead of going to court, he chose to do with Chlorine, the champion duel. Yeah, we all know how that went down. But before he gets brutally beaten up, he made Chlorine promise to protect Navia. So I have a job to do. I can't just go around stalking people. Did I mention that she's really hot? Deal. And yeah, that's basically how the whole story about Navia's father went. Anyways, we went to sleep, which is good because I'm pretty sure we've been awake for three days and after getting our sleep, we see Navia chilling, so we went to greet her and turns out she has not slept at all. Ah yes, it is known that most Genshin Impact girls are allergic to the thing called rest. But hey, she found some clues. According to her, she couldn't find anything about Bashir, but that confirms that Bashir is a key witness in the incident, since there is someone trying to cover his tracks. So after knowing that, we went to Nuvalet's office because he is untouchable. Oh, Hey. Sorry, bud. Can't let you in. Really? But I'm best friends with Nouvellet. Oh, is that so? Yeah, I just met him yesterday and we had one proper conversation. Oh, if that's the case, go right in then. That was so easy, it concerns me. Anyways, we proceeded to ask Nouvellet if he could find anything about Bashir, and of course there isn't, so we build. But before we do, Nouvellet apologized to Navia for her loss, and then she decided to... Aww. She cried about cried about it. Why does it feel like I'm making fun of her? But basically, she talked about how Nouvellet thought something was fishy about the case, but still choose to do nothing. And then we left, and it started raining for some reason. Then Navia proceeded to say, Oh, what's that, Traveler? The actual murderer could have died from the primordial sea water, and the rain could have washed away the traces? You're a genius! What? So after knowing that, we went to Poisson, the Spina di Rosula's other base, and talked to Malus. And while talking, Navia told us about what actually happened. See, there's this thing called Synth, and it's basically drugs. It ruins families and all, and the god that dissolved earlier also mentioned something like that being made from Primordia Sea Water. Anyways, Carlos was against it and tried to stop it. The dude's running the operation was pissed, but he couldn't give two shits about that. And then he went into contact with Jock to help sell Synth, then two gunshots were shot, and Jocks died. And Carlos is being accused of murdering him. So that's basically the- uh. <laughs> Anyways, then Malus was like, wow, good job. Your information I knew for years as a reward. Basically, the reason why things got so dirty in the first place was because Navia was the next target to disappear. And the reason why she didn't is because Carlos got information about the location of where Synth is being made. Oh, and he has a really bad illness and was about to die anyway. Then Navia proceeded to- the goddamn story quest yourself, this recap sucks. So Navia asked Malus if he found anything new, and looks like he did. It seems like there is an imposter among us, and Malus did a test that is don't give information to certain people and watch how the synth dudes react. And he has already got some three suspects in mind, so we're going to have to talk to them. But before we do that, hey, what's up? Why are you so friendly? Your father killed my husband. That is irrelevant. Anyway, sorry about that and all. Insert emotionless speech. Did she just literally sit and insert emotionless speech? Shut up and tell us about Jux. Oh, well, he watched Breaking Bad, so now he's in the synth business, thinking he's providing for the family despite hating the job. But then Carlos came and gave him a proposal to stop the synth business, and he accepted, but his plans was found out, and might have been threatened to kill Carlos, because before we're going to the place where the incident would happen, he told us he had no choice and died. Cool, anyways, another emotional speech. That's not how it- Come on, Traveler, time to investigate suspects. Irrelevant, irrelevant. Oh. Maybe not, but before we get to him, we learned that Carlos did not carry a gun with him when he went out, and only the very rich can get a bunch of robots, so with all those guys out of the way, that leaves us with Marcel, Navia's uncle and the owner of the Confia of Cabria, which is the sister organization to Spina di Rosula, and fun fact, that's also the guys that Child beat up just now, and they also organized the banquet at the place where the incident would occur. 
Then after talking to Marcel, we talked about who's the most suspicious, and of course we think Marcel is. We also talk about how Jax couldn't fire the gun, because if he was threatened, then how would his safety be guaranteed? <laughs> so a third person totally exists, but then a dude came and said, Yo, the hit single engine, I mean, for Tui Harbour, the child is being accused as the main suspect of a serial disappearance case. Huh. So we decided to split up. Navia will be going to the ongoing trial to prove the child's innocence and accusing Marcel while we go to the sit base place. And we're here in court. So, Mr. Tataria, do you admit that you are guilty of causing the serial disappearance case? Listen, I really don't know what this is all about, but I heard that if you're guilty, you get to fight that lady over there. That is correct. I'm guilty. What? I admit it, I'm guilty. Heck, in fact, I just killed three people prior to getting here. Hey! Wanna fight? I apologize for my rudeness earlier. Yo, you got the wrong man! Navia, I will arrest you. That isn't important. I know who's the true culprit behind the serial disappearance case. Hey, young lady, please don't ruin this for me. Well, if that's the case, you can sit down with the rest of the audience, Mr. Tataria. We're gonna ignore the fact that I literally confessed to killing three people. Anyways, Navia accused myself, then Nouvellet reminded Navia that falsely accusing someone could land her in jail. Shut up! Ah, oh, crap, she got me there. And boom, Marcel's here now. Nouvellet asked Marcel if he needs an attorney or not, and he refused. Man, these attorneys are going out of the job. So now we are begin with telling them to look back at the Callus case because it's related to the current case, and for some reason he approved, and so he started recapping what happened in that case. Spinadi Rosula hosted a banquet owned by the Confrier of Cabrier. Then everyone heard two gunshots, and when they came to see what happened, Callus had a gun in his hand, and Jux died from a gunshot wound. The guards can't find any other fire Arm, so they assume that he missed the first time and hit the second. Someone needs to go back grinding in Call of Duty. Anyways, Carlos didn't object to these claims and choose to duel instead to prove his innocence and died in a duel. Then Navia proceeded to share what she thinks happened and that is Jux was threatened to kill Carlos but didn't and because of that possibility, the culprit hired an assassin. The assassin was the one who shot Jux first but then Carlos took the gun from the assassin and shot him. Then she talked about how they were clothes on the crime scene and that proves that the assassin the Zov, and because it was raining, the culprit used the primordial sea water since the rain can cover it up. Cool, cool. Now, uh, got any evidence? No. Oh. Then Navia say they can check their clothes and they should oh, yeah. And in response, Furina said, okay. Then Furina asked why didn't he choose to defend himself in court back then? Because he ain't no snitch. Now, in actuality, I'll be in danger if he exposed the power of the primordial sea water, and so will many other people in our organization. Then she talked shit about the court. So he intended to die? Yeah, just ask Corinne, the one that fought him. Yes, he looked like he wanted to die. See, as a champion duelist, I've fought many battles and taken countless numbers of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all- Yeah, we can just move on, she already gave her answer. So Navia, how is this even related to the current case? I don't know. Okay, what she actually said was, um, because during Alini's case, the culprit dissolved the dude when he was about to be exposed. And at the Carlos case, he only took action when two gunshots were shot. So the culprit must be at the scene of the crime and and Marcel was at both places where the two incidents occurred. I got you now, bitch! What are you gonna do? Does the person really have to be at the scene to do these things? Can someone just remotely monitor the place? Bah! Then Marcel said he's a businessman, so he has no motive. And he was from Sneshnaya, and the disappearance began before he was even at Fountain too. Then he said, I have receipt, bitch! Bashir! Why did you say that name for no reason at all? Honestly, I have no idea. And now it's our turn to do the work. I wonder if they are just standing there in awkward silence. That would be funny. And so we proceeded to speed on the entire place and found some clues. The first clue we found was a report about fighting someone to murder Jux and Carlos. Man, I just love how the villains will write their entire plan down on a piece of paper and the good guys won't even question if this was forgery at all. Anyways, we then found the primordial seawater. Pretty cool. Then we found the belongings of previous victims from the case. And and then we found synth, and beside it is a thing that talked about an experiment that failed. The experiment is dissolving girls, by the way. And it looks like the purpose of this experiment is to bring back someone's lover who has dissolved named Veneer. And that someone is actually Bashir! Well damn! Then we found Veneer's diary with a list of potential baby names, and Marcel is the only one circled out. Well, that solves everything, and we're in court now. OBJECTION! There is nothing to object. In fact, you're actually objecting the words of your partner. Shut up. <laughs> that guy is a stinky liar. 
just take a look at this diary. Guys, I can't read from that far. So we explained to them that after his lover died, Veneer, he experimented on women, killing them as a result to attempt to find a way to bring back Veneer. And then he destroyed all records of his past as Veneer. And after explaining it, it successfully convinces everyone and Bashir started to have a breakdown talking about how everyone didn't believe him when his lover does off in water. And then he proceeded to talk shit about some stuff. Hey, yo, chill! Oh, wait, I forgot he's from Snishnaya. Then he proceeded to talk about some more nonsense and Nouvellet was like, this dude is insane. Gods, do your job. And child, you're no longer guilty. Cool. And boy, that was a good show. I agree, watching people cry their eyes out and almost did the forbidden to themselves is poggers. Then we gave all the evidence we have to Nouvellet and he started to summarize what happened. So Marcel was Bashir and he and his lovers are both adventurers. While exploring, Veneer touched the Primordial's water and dissolved. Then Bashir tried to kidnap other women to hopefully find a way to bring Veneer back. And to cover his tracks, he became Marcel, a businessman working in Poisson. Then he invented synth and got rich, but then came into conflict with the Spina di Rosula. Then Bashir decided to kill Talos and tried to frame me. But failed, making the Primordial Sea water public. And now it's time for the Arshis to decide. Of course, he's got them guilty, that's it. So Navia got all emotional and Chad was like, Cool, anyways, goodbye. Hold on, we still need the Arshis to do its thing on you. Come on. And so the Oratrice did its thing and... According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Tartaglia is... guilty. That makes sense, and with no choice, Nouvellet ordered the guards to take Chad into custody, but then... Uh oh. <laughs> He's getting ready. <laughs> He's just... Fuck you guys. So this is how Christine! justice is done in Fontaine. Christine! What a joke. You've got your rules. Yo, delusion! Well, I've got mine too! Let's go! Robots are just his go-to to kill. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck you doing? Yo! This team is epic! My god! Uh, holy shit, Pao Leg. Wait, is this a new version? Okay, it's just old. Okay, never mind. Oh, never mind. I am sorry. <laughs> He's just fucking. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. You sure? The rules of the court must be upheld. What the hell? Dude, just one tap child. Dude, just what the fuck? Who is this guy? Bunny. Anyways, everyone was confused and. Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it. I, I don't know what happened there either. Hey, stop staring at me! Yeah, she was the one that made the oratories and she still managed to bullshit her way out. Well, time to speedrun cause the 4.2 update is literally tomorrow. Bashir asked how we knew about the name Bashir and we told him about the fountain and he requested to go outside and Nouvellet said is this request worth more than your life? And he said yes and Nouvellet was now conflicted. And we showed him the fountain. Yo, what's up? Oh shit, it's you! We merged into this because of the primordial sea water chemicals! Yeah, he's dead. Anyway, several days passed and we ran into Navia and she told us about how she's good with Florin now and we accompany her to visit her father's grave. Yo, Nouvellet's there! Anyways, Navia asked what he's doing here and he said I have no idea what justice is as the chief justice and talk about how he didn't think humans would value something more than their lives and that's why he didn't stop Kalos from doing Chlorine and now he has tons of regrets. And so Navia and Nouvellet are cool now and the rain stopped. Oh hey, Nouvellet chilling. What's up? I'ma answer questions now. Alright. So we asked about the primordial sea water and he said most life forms were first born in that sea, but now the sea is no longer in the world and what Vashir found was a remnant. Then we asked why people from Fontaine would dissolve and he responded with I don't know. We then asked about the prophecy and he said it was rumored that that was the last words of the original Hydro Archon. And Farina is taking this prophecy really seriously. With that demeanor? And that's the Archon quest. Alright, that was a video and overall, honestly, this Archon quest was flipping epic it was really good and as you can see i am in this place the music just decided to go intense for no reason at all that's basically the fortress of Meripede. but yeah 
the Archon quest was flipping great. Farina was flipping great. She is the best Archon in my opinion, even though she might not be the Archon because of her lack of power. Um, she's still the best because goddamn. And yeah, this video is a little different. If you guys do like this video, then just comment. And if you guys actually did make it to the end, like right here, right now, then I applaud Rather you. Thank you so much. Creatures. Shut the fuck. But yeah, if you guys like this video, then just comment. I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna stick to this format because it could be incoherent to like understand because I talk so fast or my way of pronouncing words is weird. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna end it here now. See you next year. Next flipping year with the 4.2. 4.1 Archon Quest recap, yep.